All right, so a lot of people want to hook an inverter like this up to uh, their house for power outages or other purposes, but they don't want to go through the uh, the time, expense, the regulatory regulatory hurdles of putting in a transfer switch and all that good stuff, because that really adds up. And uh, why spend thousands of dollars on that, and they use a hundred fifty dollar inverter or something like that? It just doesn't make sense. So a lot of people want a, a cheap and easy way, although maybe not quite perfectly legal hooking something like this up to their house temporarily to power things so they don't need extension cords and power strips strewn through their entire house. So the first thing you obviously need to do is to go down to your basement or wherever it's located and find your uh, your breaker panel where your power comes in. Here in my house I have the cover off for uh, a variety of reasons but uh, ignore that. Yours will have the, uh, the nice shiny cover on it. And uh, go downstairs, find your main breaker and snap it off because obviously if you want to hook up to the power system of your house with your inverter you're not going to be able to overpower the utility and uh, that needs to be off or you will fry everything but uh, that's the first step all right now that the breaker is off the next thing a lot of people do is take a couple of extension cords cut them apart wire nut the two together and end up with the cord that uh, I like to call a suicide cord where you have one end that looks like this, and another end that looks like this. Looks really safe, doesn't it? Anyway, so you take one of these, you plug it into your inverter, like so. You take the other one and plug it into your outlet, like so. Then you go back over to your inverter, thinking you're all smart, go over to your battery, hook it up, everything looks good. Flip the inverter on, and poof, it explodes. I don't actually have uh, the cords hooked up. This actually goes into something completely different. But had I done that, this inverter would have uh, would have been destroyed. It would have smoked and who knows what else. And also it would be uh, dangerous because this battery bank would have been energized. So I will uh, tell you why that's a bad idea here. All right, so why doesn't that strategy work? Work. It seems like it should, but uh, there's a reason why it doesn't. So first thing I'm going to do, I have this set to ohms. I'll put this one on the negative cable, and this one on ground on the output. And if I do that, you can see that uh, they're tied directly together. Uh, that's just the resistance of my test leads. So the ground of the output and the ground of your battery are hard tied together. All right, now we're on the voltage waveform. So if I take my test leads now, put them in the inverter, we get our uh, modified sine wave output, which is, once this thing stabilizes, my multimeter has trouble triggering on modified sine wave, you get uh, about 60 hertz and uh, about 120 volts AC. You can see that the top and bottom are about uh, 145 positive and 145 volts negative which is what it should be. But uh, let's try something different. What happens if I go from neutral to ground? Now it is a square wave at 75 volts positive, 75 volts negative. So what if I go from ground to hot? It is also about 75 volts positive negative and a square wave. So what the heck is going on here, right? I thought neutral and ground were the same voltage. Well, not on cheap inverters like this. This is a modified sine wave inverter that uses a different output scheme. And uh, ground and neutral are not connected together. And it is not allowed to use something like this on a grounded neutral system for that reason, because both hot and neutral are actually hot on this inverter. You get about uh, half voltage from ground to neutral and about half voltage from ground to hot on something like this. And if you tie ground and neutral directly together, this thing will go poof. For those of you who are not familiar with how breaker boxes are set up, up here we have the three lines that come into the house. We have the, uh, the current carrying neutral in the middle and a hot on this side and a hot on this side. They're both 180 degrees out of phase, 120 volts, which gives me 240 between the two hots. The, uh, the ground rod that's driven into the ground outside the house is connected right to this current carrying neutral, 
those are one and the same. They're tied together here in this box. And all of the circuits on both sides, one, one of the, uh, half of them are tied to this one up here, and half of them are tied to this one over here. However, all of the grounds and all of the neutrals are all tied together over here and over here. There is no difference between ground and neutral aside from that neutral is designed to carry current and ground is not. So ground and neutral are tied together in this breaker box. And that's why if I take that cord and plug it into the wall straight from the inverter, ground and neutral are going to be tied together here in this box and the inverter will self-destruct. It does not like that. Uh, not all inverters are constructed that way. Some of them really are isolated, but almost all of the modified sine wave inverters that you'll find out there are this way, and you cannot use a three-prong three plug to uh, connect them to your house wiring. So the next thing that sometimes happens when people figure that out is they think, aha, so I'll take this cord and I'll plug it into my inverter, and I'll hook it up instead of to a three-prong to something that looks like this and plug it into the wall. Now my inverters ground and neutral are not connected because I have no connection to the ground lug and now everything should be fine. Well, it sort of is. Your inverter will work. It will, uh, will power the circuits in your house. However, in your breaker box, neutral is still connected to ground. So you get your whole setup plugged in. You turn it on. Everything seems to be working fine, but uh, you may notice now that uh, if I take my, uh, my neutral and ground are now the same, remember, in my house. So if I take a look at uh, from ground of somewhere to my battery, which is now neutral, my battery now has 80 volts AC going to it, which is dangerous. It doesn't really matter which terminal I pick. They're both live. So now by plugging my inverter into the wall, I've just made my batteries live. And you can't touch any of the battery connections over here, or you'll get zapped, which isn't very safe. So, what's the solution to that? Well, some people will take their battery, find the negative side, and ground it. Well, so you ground your battery, and uh, you blow up your inverter once again. Um, so basically what I'm saying here is that there is no safe way to use an inverter like this to power your house. If you do that, uh, you're certainly violating codes and your fire insurance, uh, home insurance policy you may not like that if there's a fire or something, but uh, if you feel that you must, and uh, I'm not going to say don't do it because I may intend to do that at some point if there's a, a power outage or something, but uh, if you do feel like you have to do that, just keep in mind all the safety issues because uh, you could easily destroy your inverter, which would cost you money, or you could easily uh, cause some sort of electrocution hazard, which uh, is probably even worse. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, there are some little quirks like that to using an inverter like this to power your house. <clears throat> and uh, I should also mention uh, why they're set up this way. I could draw this out on paper, but uh, I'm just going to briefly describe it so it doesn't take too much time. Uh, you pretty much have, uh, like I showed, two, uh, two outputs on each of the outlets, um, both at uh, one half voltage, and they're both square wave. Uh, but if you take those two, two square wave outputs and uh, you offset them by about 45 degrees, you'll end up with a modified sine wave output. And that allows them to, uh, to basically cut the costs of the drive electronics in the inverter, where you can get a modified sine wave output with having uh, just half the voltage on each side uh, to save them some money. But uh, that's why they have it set up that way with the live hot and a live neutral. Um, some of the, uh, the ones, or all of the ones that are designed for hardwired applications do not have a live neutral. Those all have an internal connection between uh, neutral and uh, ground. So if you do plan on using a, a hardwired type of inst installation, um, hopefully without uh, a suicide cord as I had shown, then uh, those higher priced inverters will work. However, you can make something like this work for this application if you keep those things in mind. But uh, there are a few other things that I also want to mention. If you hook an inverter like that up to your house, you now have everything powered off of a modified sine wave, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Uh, that can uh, damage some devices. And uh, 
right here, right next to uh, where I'm filming, I have a couple things plugged in. One of them is my camera battery charger, and it is a very, very cheap charger. I got this off of eBay for next to nothing, and uh, I really don't know if this would run off of a, a modified sine wave or not, but a lot of chargers like this won't. Um, there's a, a special kind of circuit that things like this use, a transformerless circuit that uh, actually fries, smokes, and is permanently destroyed if you put it on a modified sine wave. This uh, night light that I have here, uh, which is light controlled, turns on and off, with a little LED in it. I'm pretty sure this one will also fry off of a modified sine wave. But these are just cheap devices. It may not be such a big deal. However, there is one thing most houses have, most newer houses at least, here in the United States. In fact, it's code. They're required to have it. That uh, could really cost you some serious money. Here's one of my smoke alarms. These are hardwired, as they're all required to be in new construction, and uh, with battery backup. And they're all tied together, so that when one goes off, everyone in the entire house goes off. And according to code, I need one in every bedroom, in every hallway connected to each bedroom, and in the utility room. That means I have three upstairs and uh, four in the basement. And this is a pretty small house, but I still have seven of these. And they are hardwired, so in some jurisdictions you're not allowed to do this as a homeowner. You need a licensed, con a li licensed electrician. Luckily, I don't live in one of those places, so I can do this myself. However, these, they state clearly in the instructions. And this is true of most smoke alarms. On a modified sine wave inverter, these will fry, and you'll have to replace every one of them. And that could get quite expensive. Uh, they're probably $15 a piece, 15 20 bucks a piece, times 7. Uh, plus, if you have to pay a licensed electrician to do it, that's going to cost you a whole heck of a lot more. Um, and these are hardwired into the breaker box. There's actually a, a breaker on there. You could flip that breaker off to protect them, but if you forget, that's a problem. Other things that may not work very well are things like your microwave oven. Anything that has a, a timer or a clock, a lot of these uh, cheap things, just use the, uh, the zero crossover point of your AC waveform to determine time, because that should happen 60 times a second. A lot of them don't have an internal oscillator to save money. And uh, those won't run properly. A lot of microwaves don't like modified sine wave. It's very hard on them. If you do it just for short periods, it's probably fine. Another problem is uh, refrigerators. The refrigerator compressor, this one here at least, uses uh, about uh, 140 watts when it's running off of wall power. It uses about 160 watts when it's running off of a modified sine wave inverter. I've tested that. And uh, that extra 20 watts just goes into, well, one, lost efficiency, and two, into heat into the motor. The motor gets hotter, the compressor gets hotter, and uh, it has to run a lot more to keep up then, which costs you uh, battery power for one, but uh, also it uh, just runs hotter and it won't last as long. It's not designed for modified sine wave use. And uh, if you go look up... Uh, um, NEMA specifications on motors. Uh, motors, induction motors, are clearly not designed to run on a modified sine wave inverter. They have too much uh, harmonic distortion, and you actually get uh, things like uh, circulating currents in the bearings of these uh, motors, which can uh, deteriorate the, uh, the oils, the greases in those bearings. You get spark through through the bearings because of those uh, high frequency currents, <clears throat> and uh, it actually uh, destroys the oil over time causing a eventual motor failure. So there's quite a few things that uh, that you need to worry about using a modified sine wave inverter, um, even on simple things like refrigerators. But uh, it is, I think, an effective way to get uh, emergency power for short-term use. I wouldn't expect any damage to something like this if you just run it for a few days out of its entire lifetime. However, running it for extended periods of time will undoubtedly shorten the life of a lot of appliances. Another thing I almost forgot to mention is that uh, if you just plug it into one outlet, you're only going to energize one side of it, not the other side. And that means that uh, on this particular breaker panel, every other breaker on each side will be powered and every other one will not be. Uh, but you only get about half your house powered and none of your 240 volt appliances will work. Um, so the way around that is to uh, find two outlets, one that's on each phase, and connect them both up so that they're both in phase. Make sure you don't get the connection reversed, um, neutral and ground, because if you do, once again, your inverter will go poof. But uh, if you connect them both up so that they're both in phase, neutral to neutral, ground to ground, or hot to hot, neutral to neutral, then you'll end up with 
every single breaker on here energized and uh, you'll get nothing across 240 volts so there won't be any brownout concerns on that. And your 244 volt stuff will operate but uh, all of the 110 volt stuff will. And your inverter is likely not powerful enough to uh, handle everything in your house so you can just snap off all the inverter, all the uh, breakers that, uh, that you're not using. And that will get you through temporarily making sure that nobody touches that live battery that you don't ground the battery, that you don't set any of your equipment next to anything that's grounded that might short out and cause a fire. Um, it's not a safe way of doing it, but uh, it can be done. Just uh, just be careful. Anyway, that's my uh, little video that I'm making today on this uh, Xantrex Pro Watt 600 Watt Inverter. If you happen to uh, need an inverter and 600 watts is enough for you, then uh, something like this is a, a very good choice, I think. It's a good quality unit, and it uh, should serve you pretty well. Like I said, I'll probably be reselling this one eventually, um, since I have uh, another one coming in the mail. But uh, eventually I'll find an inverter that I like, and I'll keep that one. But uh, until then, I'll keep looking. So, thanks for watching.